some of these flavors. Yeah. <laughs> there's cherry, there's honey, mm. there's orange cream, mm -hmm. double apple. Tobacco? Mm -hmm. Mango. Ooh, that's my favorite. Sweet, <laughs> sweet melon. Mm -hmm. I mean, how are they flavored like that? How, what? Yeah, how do they? That's do something that? I don't really explore. That's, that's I think it's kind of a don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, thing. you just kind of accept it, right? Mm, yeah, I'm fine it's with that. It's sweetened with molasses, and they come from Turkey. Uh, I am pretty sure there's some artificial flavoring going on in there. Yeah, sure. Um, well, let's talk about what you do know. The, yeah, the tea. <laughs> we have some tasting to yeah. do, Joan. Mm -hmm. Do. So let's start with this one. I think this is the Moroccan. Do you want to tell us a little that's bit about the, the Moroccan? That, uh, the, let's see, the lighter one. I think that's the Moroccan mint. You can yep, smell it. Yeah, that's the Moroccan mint for sure. Um, yeah, that's a, it's a drink that's popular in Morocco. Mm -hmm. um, it's made mm. with green tea, gunpowder green tea, which can stand up to some sturdy steeping as far as green teas go, and peppermint tea, and we add sugar. Um, and it's just a really, it's kind of a fun drink, and it's, it's good with food because it's got a strong flavor. It's good for digestion. So good. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it is really great. Mm -hmm. You have another one, too. Yeah. Another what? Another tea. Oh, I do? Yeah. And this is the vanilla honeybush, which is, uh, the honeybush is a plant that's related to rooibos, which is oh, a, I love the a rooibos. plant that's gaining oh, yeah. a lot of popularity yes. right now. There's no caffeine in it. It's from the African red bush plant, and mm. I think the honey bush is just related to that plant. And it has natural testanes in it that, that sweeten it. Yes, it's sweet. Without any it's sugar. Um, and with the vanilla, it just is kind of like an exotic treat. It's lovely. Yeah. So did you, do you put these teas together? Do you uh, put the flavor? Like, we you? blend the Moroccan mint. We, we do a lot of blending, especially of our herbal teas. Yeah. And then there's a few, like we have the tea house blend, uh, a winter spice blend. So, and sometimes we'll make like Earl Grey with lavender and mm. things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, I'm moving Fantastic. on. Okay, wait, before you go. <laughs> I'm moving on. I, as the restaurant, <laughs> as the restaurant owner, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and test your knowledge. All right. Okay, of your own of your own restaurant. How many teas do you have? Mm. I usually go with a number rounding around forty-eight. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> that's, in that's so that's unbelievable. Okay, question number two. Spider leg Cylon differs from the monkey picked Tai Guan Yin. How? Cylon. Uh, the the spider leg Cylon is. Uh, it's a red tea from China, which is kind of like a black tea. It's just, it has to be from China. Um, that is a, it's kind of a rich flavored tea. I, I think it, it sometimes lends itself well to milk and sugar if you like to have tea like that. And the, uh, what was the other one? <laughs> the uh, monkey picked Tai Guan Yin. Monkey picked. Tiguan Yin uh, is an oolong, which would be standardly grown in Taiwan. It's known as monkey pick because that's the, the leaves from the very top of the plant, the very delicate leaves, and before they would train monkeys to go up into really? that area. I think now it's done mechanically, but it's a tightly rolled uh, leaf, that whereas the spider legs, it's called spider legs because the leaves are kind of twisted and skinny like spider legs hmm. um, as far as I know <laughs> yeah, we're the, buying it. <laughs> uh, but the uh, oolongs are more of a in between greens and blacks and they lend themselves to several different steepings oftentimes people do a thing called the uh, gung fu style tea where you just steep small amounts in a, in a smaller like ceramic dish and you're and then you'll pour small amounts of it and then steep it like up to ten times if it's a really oh, wow. good oolong Whereas the spider legs, maybe you could steep it two or three times and, uh, and then it'll be pretty kaput. Awesome. And my last question. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's not done yet. What would happen, <laughs> if, what would happen if I put gunpowder tea into the hookah? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I don't think it would blow up. Um, but it might smell funny. 
Oh, you, yeah. that's so funny. You yeah. know your stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. 48 teas. That's ah! a lot. I think so. There could be more. Hmm. So do you guys sell coffee, or is that just a... Uh -uh. Nope. Do not like coffee? We get that question a lot, though. And I've actually considered it many times. And the, the conclusion I always come to is that it would affect the atmosphere of the tea house in a way that I think would uh, take it away from the really mellow vibe that yeah. we have. Because coffee is something you drink That's to get kind of jacked up. Yeah. Gotcha. I love that. We've, yeah. We're running out of time, and so we must taste okay. while we we'll okay. still have Gwendolyn in the studio. So we have Pita, mm -hmm. right? John, do you want me to set you up on one? Yeah. So this so is let, let kind of a this. display of uh, one of our goat herder platters, or also the kid, the half goat, um, that just has a lot of different appetizers. It's Middle Eastern style. Then we, we get the pita from Baltimore. We don't actually make it, but we toast it up with some za'atar, and it tastes really delicious. This is our handmade hummus, which we're pretty well known for. I'd like to eventually sell it in some rest, uh, stores around town. Can I just do it like this? So Yeah, just dip it up. We usually serve it with some knives or just Thanks people, so finger foods. It's a beautiful platter. And, and so, I'm sorry, did you say that you do sell this like we this? We don't. The? Oh, yeah, we sell it like this at the tea house, very similarly. Um, but we, uh, people sometimes ask if we sell our hummus by the pound because it is delicious. So good. Yeah. And but you you don't right now, but you will. No, you have to go through some regulations that I haven't jumped through those hoops yet. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Well, since you're trying to calm your day down, you might that might take a while. Yeah. <laughs> you're trying to keep that nice relaxed aura about you. That's right. We could all take a lesson from you on that one. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and then we have some feta, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Dilled Havarti. Dilled Havarti. Mm -hmm. You want some Dilled Havarti, John? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And some really good dates, magical dates. So magical dates? Magical. <laughs> Med Medjool? Medjool. Medjool. Do you guys have, like, a, is, your, is your menu sort of Middle Eastern? It's kind of Middle Eastern Indian Americana. It's, it's a wide spread because we have pesto and then we have uh, dal and rice and we have uh, smoked salmon from Alaska. Mm. Uh, and then there's the soups I make three times a week that you're oh, yeah. all, they kind of run the span, usually vegetarian, like Turkish lentil or uh, cream of spinach, mm -hmm. things like that. Is it mainly vegetarian? Yes. And the, I mean, the tea house offers, I think, more vegetarian options than most restaurants in town. The only Which meat we have is me. some fish. It yeah. surprises me there's not more vegetarian places yeah. in Charlottesville. So what are, what are your hours that you're open and, and what is your address? And where can people find you? Yes, exactly. Oh, so, on the yeah, that's the hardest part is finding us. We're kind of <laughs> yes. like a speakeasy. We're on the downtown mall um, upstairs and usually our little teapot sign is outside, a little red teapot with what's going on today or just friendly messages. But down on the end of the mall towards the um, Discovery Center, mm -hmm. And but upstairs, like I said, above Ike's uh, mm -hmm. underground, and we're open from 11:30 a.m. till midnight. Wow! Six days a week, closed on Sundays. And you have music. You have music there, and performances, mm -hmm. and lots of art. Is there a schedule online? On yes, your website? there's an events page on our website. Uh -huh. And the website is uh, www.tbazaar.com. Tbazaar. T e a b a z a a r try to make it tricky dot com, dot com. Mm -hmm. it's a great website by the way thank you yeah it's very nice very Yay. cutting edge <laughs> it is mm. we're gonna come and hang out with you please do but right now we're gonna eat your food yeah. <laughs> and uh you wanted to mention or i wanted you to mention this pesto quickly before we close out oh yeah that's that's one of our more popular sandwiches too the uh pesto tomato mozzarella mm. and it, we make it uh, fresh like, uh, with like a pound of basil a few times a week, three times a week. I think we go through a lot of pesto. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Gwendolyn. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very, for coming. Very much. Yeah. Thank you for bringing your food and your tea. Thanks, y'all. We'll be coming to hang out and do some beat poetry down right at the on. Tea Bazaar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure to bring our cameras. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for coming on the show, Gwendolyn. And uh, you all can't taste this, but it's delicious. So mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. It's, it's wonderful. And it sounds like a really cool environment to hang out. It does. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, to top it all off, we've got 
Randy's flowers. Aren't those nice flowers, Brendan? Mm, they're beautiful. Don't they make your food look beautiful? And they make Even me more beautiful? think of spring already. Oh, yes. Thank you, Randy, for your flowers. Yeah. And uh, stay tuned next week because we have another great lineup of people. And in the meantime, spread the good word. Check that mic, make sure it sound right, boy. Oh,